there. Um, once again, welcome everyone. It's 5.30. We have our uh, sixth virtual session today. It's uh, on financial aid and student billing, student financials. Um, and if you see me get a little distracted uh, along the way, it's because I am admitting folks into the call. Um, so bear with me on that. For families who are joining us for the first time, you can see on uh, the screen that um, what to expect on the 20th when you get here. Uh, later this week, I'll be sending out an email with the details. So uh, no big reason for you to start taking notes around what to expect on the 20th. Um, I've covered it. I see a lot of the same names who are joining us. Uh, but just to uh, kind of stick to our plan, what to expect on the 20th, you should already have your check-in time from ResLife. Uh, email is housing at csum.edu from where you should have heard uh, when we are expecting you on campus and also who your student's roommate is. Once um, you arrive on campus, you'll be directed to park in parking lot O and move into or walk into uh, the adjacent building. It is called Physical Education and Aquatic Center, uh, PIAC. Um, there you will be welcomed with a package, one each for your student and one for you. The student will be whisked away to go into a large gym where we will have their um, uniform distribution after uh, while they're picking up their uniforms in a large uh, tote box you will have an opportunity to meet in person some of the folks you've been uh, meeting um, uh, virtually and have uh, your um, you know final last first questions answered uh, by these experts and um, generally we'll be there to welcome you and you, uh, any way we can um, this should take no more than 30 minutes, at which time you will head back to your car and drive up to your designated res hall. Once you pull up to your res hall, the driver remains in the car. Everyone else can hop out. I know there has been some confusion from uh, the, the letter that you received, which said only the student can get out. Uh, let me assure you, family members who are coming with the student are welcome to get off uh, the, the car, get out from the car and go to the room. Uh, the only exception is the driver. They'll have to take their car back. And um, when they are done parking their car back, they are welcome to walk back up or catch a shuttle. We'll most likely have a, a van um, running uh, between the res halls and uh, the parking lot. And you can hop on one of those um, to uh, get to your res hall and check out your student's room, kind of put the bed sheets on, hugs and kisses, whatever it is that makes you feel comfortable leaving your student behind. Um, so that will be uh, made available uh, please excuse any confusion from the email that you received. Um, after that, two o'clock, your student will be on the quad uh, with the commandants and they will be uh, learning how to do formation and such. We will invite you to a quick reception and then uh, a few words with the president and the uh, leadership. You'll come out of there at three and we'll have a capping ceremony, which is interesting and sweet. And you'll be putting the cap on your student. That's our transition from going uh, from um, being a student to a cadet. And um, it's a pretty interesting, um, a pretty interesting event. And after that, you will have uh, an opportunity to go get a meal together and also make any uniform exchanges. If um, during that time, at some point, uh, you, your student will be expected to try out their uniforms. If they picked up a certain size, like they picked up a medium and the medium was not quite right for them, uh, they'll have an opportunity till seven o'clock that evening to swap it out for the, the size that might fit better. So somewhere in the, your visit, you'll need to uh, make an opportunity to have that happen. Um, with that, um, I want to kind of give you a couple of um, extra tips. Dress in layers, wear comfortable shoes. There are lots of stairs and, you know, walking that may be involved. Um, you don't necessarily have to go up and down the stairs, but 
you know, there's you'll be on your feet a little bit. So be careful about your footwear. Um, and there are some road closures that we've shared with you along 80 East. So if you're going to be using that freeway, just keep that in mind. Google should be telling you what, you know, how to avoid those. But just in case, if you go to Caltrans, I-80, Bay Area, uh, and just Google that in, and you'll get a search that gives you updates. So keep that in mind as well. Um, if on that day you're unable to make it to Target or anywhere else that you shop uh, for anything you forgot or need, do not worry. On Friday night, we will have shuttles running from campus to Target so your student can pick up something that they didn't imagine they would need or forgot. So please keep that in mind. Do not worry about things like that. Um, I have really good, great news to share. We are going to open our, um, our marketplace, our dining hall uh, for lunch and dinner that day. So we really invite you to come uh, visit the dining center. Uh, you know, it'll give you an idea of what your kids are going to be eating uh, or your family members are going to be eating uh, when they're here uh, on campus. It's It took a lot of work for us to make that happen. So I'm really hopeful that you will um, you will uh, utilize this opportunity to visit. It's a beautiful building and the view is awesome. Um, I am still hoping that we can maybe play some music and make it a little festive. Uh, but I found out just yesterday that we are going to open the dining hall on that day. So I'm really excited about that. Um, I think um, that's all the um, update I have on what to expect. Um, I would like to invite now our presenters who can um, introduce themselves first and uh, share with you what their role is and uh, how they interact with students and what pertinent information they have for you. Uh, we'll do this in a couple of rounds. Let's go with introductions first and then come back and start talking about what you do. After that, we will open it up for Q&A and uh, please put your questions in chat and I will fill those um, when we get to that point. And at the very end, we'll open it up for anyone who is unable, has been unable to um, put, in it, put their question in chat and we'll go from there. So with that, uh, I invite uh, Judy to open it up. And Judy, if you will please uh, popcorn over to uh, the next colleague and go that way. Um, so with that, Judy, thank you for being here and um, take it away. Thank you, Vanita. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Judy Aguirre. I am the Student Financials and Conquer Travel Accountant. I assist here in the cashier's office. And so we also have on the call, uh, my manager, Frank Vessio and Robbie Joseph. Um, if you wanna introduce yourselves. Hi, uh, uh, this is Robbie Joseph. Uh, so uh, I am uh, in charge of the financial operations uh, along with uh, Frank. Uh, Welcome aboard all the carrots and parents. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, you can always uh, find us at the cashier's office or, you know, our accounting offices uh, right next door. So uh, happy to see you all and welcome. Frank? Hi, right, sorry, just pushing the wrong buttons here. There we go. Hi, uh, my name is Frank Vescio. I'm the accounting manager here in uh, financial services. And uh, there we go. Everybody's a little more visible now. I'm sorry. Yes, people. I'm sorry. What's that? We're not technically challenged here yet. So we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, yeah, welcome all the, the new cadets to the Cal Maritime. And um, Robbie mentioned we're in charge of the uh, financial services here in, in the cashier's office. Um, Judy and let's see, Sarah got stepped in the picture there. So we uh, we're here for anything from parking permits to uh, you know reviewing your um, 
your um, financial statements for your the student student financials. So any questions or anything, feel free to contact us. Thanks. And I'm sorry, but who's, who will be up next? So. Yes, um, I had sent him a message and he will be on in 10 minutes. 10 he, minutes he's the one who's sending, um, presenting <laughs> today as well. So he'll be on pretty soon. Thank you. Um, uh, well, Saul, Saul is, uh, is our financial aid administrator. And um, thank you, Judy, for texting him to let us know that he'll be joining us shortly. Uh, if you can um, share anything that you have for, for families on uh, student financials, how the billing happens, what the due dates are uh, moving forward. I know we had a due date uh, that was August 4th. And if there's anything outstanding from all of that, uh, that would be helpful. Thank you. Sure, um, I can go ahead uh, while waiting for Saul. I can share my screen um, so they can access the Student Financials website. So if you go on the homepage of Cal Maritime, it's csum.edu. On the search bar here, you can search students and parents. Uh, Vinita, do you see my, my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Students and parents and the first link here has all the dates. Um, so it says here, fall 2023, tuition and fees are due August 4th, which was already last Friday. If you click this link here, this is where you can make the payment online. And the login is generally the cadet's uh, student ID number, which includes the two zeros in the beginning and the password is the last four digits of the social security number. And so we have here the dates of when financial aid will be dispersed, which is August 21st. And um, if a cadet drops classes before the start of the semester, uh, there will be a 100% refund of tuition and fees. If it's after the beginning of the semester, um, it will be prorated. So you can find all of our information here. The cashier office hours are Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4 p.m. And then here is our email as well. So um, we also have the installment payment plan and you can feel free to just look through the links here. Um, but the installment payment plan is, uh, what, is what we offer uh, if the payment cannot be made in full. And the, the form is here. You can read more um, about it. And maybe that's all we can share here. Um, you can even find our refund policy as well. So yeah, I think that's all I have on student financials. Um, does anyone have any questions? So uh, folks will probably write their questions in as the presentation moves forward. Okay. Uh, I have I don't see anything in chat right now. Uh, when uh, something is in chat, I will read it out. I mm -hmm. do, uh, from another family, uh, there was something. Could you talk a little bit about e-checks for payment? Uh, yes. Please. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you, Vanita. So on the online payments website, um, it, it covers here, if you pay online with a debit or credit card, there is a 2.75% service fee. But if you pay with an e-check, which is your bank account or routing numbers, there is no fee for that. And so um, I also wanted to mention uh, the authorization to release information um, per California State University policy. We cannot share any information on the student's account unless they're on file for authorization to release information. And you can find the help guide here on how your cadet can add the parent um, on the PeopleSoft student systems for authorization. Um, so 
Could you talk a little bit more? I should actually mention that uh, in a previous call, at least once before, we have uh, spoken about FERPA, uh, which which is um, an act uh, for privacy, and that keeps us from being able to share um, financial, uh, academic, health, uh, all of those types of conduct-related information with families. Um, and there is a workaround. Uh, students are able to file paperwork with the campus, allowing certain people uh, to have access to one or all of those areas, health, academics, um, finances, uh, and conduct. So unless each of those has been marked um, on that form and uh, explicit um, permission is given, none of us could share information with you directly. So even when you call me to ask certain things about your students, I can speak to hypothetical situations or how what support systems we have in place, but cannot discuss specific student related information with you as a family member. Um, so please work with your student and um, have them complete the paperwork where you feel that you need to, to remain involved. Um, do uh, Judy, could you speak a little bit to their, um, is there any way parents can, uh, for payment purposes, see what's on the bill and all of that is, is do they get anything at all or it has to all yes. go through the student? Yeah, so on CashNet, um, the cadet has the option to add their parents' email to receive the billing statements. And I do see some questions on the chat here um, from yeah. Heather. Uh, she says, on my son's account, I don't see tuition on the bill. So for incoming freshmen, uh, they have to be registered in fall classes before the rest of the charges are posted on their account. And I believe the registrar's office are working on this to register uh, to uh, for the freshmen to register them into classes. And so if they haven't been in, registered in classes yet, the whole bill won't show on their account. All the charges won't show. So um, we have yet to work on that still. Uh, there are still new students coming in and uh, hopefully we'll get this situated um, for the fall semester. So uh, quickly building a little bit upon what Judy said, um, our students have a very specific roadmap for their academics. And uh, because it's their first year to save them from any angst, we actually um, block register them since they, they have roadmaps that tell them what classes they're gonna take each sem semester. We have um, the registrar's office goes in and says, if you are a DEC student or an MT student, these are the classes you must take. There's not a lot of wiggle room in that. Um, they just go in and register the student in that. Uh, and we call it block registration because everyone taking DEC as a, as a first time freshman will get those classes. Um, if you've taken any uh, AP courses or if you've done any transfer credits, in those situations, they um, get that information from admissions and they make some adjustments. And it's absolutely possible for your student when they're on campus to go to the registrar's office during that first week of orientation to say, hey, I know you block registered me for history, but I really want to take geography instead, or, you know, what, do some adjustments. Can I get an afternoon class? I don't want the morning class. So based on what their preferences are, some adjustments can be made um, during the first week of uh, class. And so Judy, could you speak to what the bill that they received for the fourth? Um, sorry. Um, yeah, Robbie. What that was in, what was included in that? Yes, Ravi. Yeah, so I just want to clarify. We, we actually had, you know, two billing statements sent out. You know, one was the uh, early part of uh, July, and uh, you know, second billing statement, uh, latter part of uh, July. But you know, the, the, I know there were transfer students and few freshmen were not registered at that time. So uh, those are students we are working with, uh, making sure you know they have. Uh, already selected the classes so we can build the rest of the payments. So just want to clarify that, but majority of the billings, you know, already went out in July. 
Perfect. Thank you, Robbie. Um, so I know Saul has an, um, has arrived, and I want to give him an opportunity to introduce himself and uh, let us know what he does and what um, important financial aid information he has uh, to start out with. And then I'm going to hit the questions because they're building up. Saul. Good afternoon, everyone. My sincere apologies. I'm so sorry. I... <laughs> I must have looked at the calendar wrong and I was up today. So I thought last time I checked the meeting started at six. So I have my sincere apologies for being a little bit late. Uh, my name is Saul Ramirez. I am the associate director in the Office of Financial Aid and Scholarships. Um, I'm here to answer any questions about financial aid. I do have a brief presentation. Benita, I'm not sure if we have the time to go through it. We do? Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I'll give you some background information on um, what to expect coming forward with uh, fall semester. But we'll fast forward first to what you need to be doing now because it's already time to start thinking about the next academic year. I know it's crazy. You haven't even started uh, first year here, but um, let me go ahead and share my screen and share information about financial aid here. Um, let me see. Can everybody see the PowerPoint in presentation mode, hopefully? Yes? Awesome. Thank you. All right, so here's what I hope you get out of this presentation. Um, I'll be talking about the financial aid process, cost of attendance. If you haven't looked at it, how much should you expect to pay for one academic year? How to access the bill and financial aid information? I know you've been talking about the bill already, um, how, but how does that play into students who are receiving financial aid, payment plan options, refunds? If your student is receiving a refund, how is that coming? Um, an important aspect of financial aid is maintaining financial aid. And there is a specific policy that I want to talk about, which is satisfactory academic progress. Um, and then lastly, um, the four most important things to remember when applying for financial aid, when going through the financial aid process, and also have important dates at the very end here. I mentioned we haven't even started the first year, but you need to be thinking about filling out the FAFSA or the DREAM Act application for the 24-25 academic year. I know it's crazy. I know it's ridiculous, but this is when students should be applying for um, next year. Don't wait until last minute. Don't wait until March 2nd. The FAFSA and the DREAM Act application will be available soon, um, right towards the end of fall semester. So don't miss um, the opportunity to apply for financial aid starting in um, December. Right now, they haven't uh, released the exact date. In past years, it was October 1st. That's going to be different. Um, so that is a big change coming up. If you were used to filling out your FAFSA on October 1st, it is not going to be available October 1st of this year. Potentially, it'll be October 1st of next year. But this year, um, if you're trying to do it, you won't be able to wait until December um, and once the exact date is released, Department of Ed will let us know. We'll also send out communication to our students on the exact date. That'll be the first day that students can pull out, not the deadline. The deadline will continue to be March 2nd, um, but that means that the window to apply is going to be shorter now. So from January or end of December through March 2nd. Um, so just keep that in mind. There are some students who have to go what's called a verification process. Um, so keep an eye out or ask your student if there are any items on their student portal, specifically a section on there that is called their to-do list. So the Department of Ed will select some students to say, submit document information to financial aid. Some of these um, common requested items include tax information from you and or your student, um, income information uh, or income verification, as well as what's called a household size verification so that you list who is um, who are the members of the household. If the student is selected again, they will be listed on their to-do list. We will also communicate to the student via email. Important that students are checking their um, csum.edu email accounts. However, not everybody is selected. So if you ask your student, hey, did you? is there anything on your to-do list or did you get an email? And they say no, more than likely, probably true. There isn't anything but worth checking that to-do list anyway. Um, we won't be able to offer any financial aid for students who are selected and we've not received those documents. Um, potentially you're in the situation now where your student has not received their financial aid and you're wondering how come school's going to start soon and we still have not received their financial aid package. It is very possible there are items outstanding out there that we need to collect from the student um, in order to award their financial aid. If they already have their financial aid, great, they're good to go, should be ready to start the academic year. 
I want to talk really quickly about cost of attendance. If you haven't already looked at this table on our website, um, this is approximately how much it would cost for one academic year. The majority of our students are required to live on campus. So we're going to focus on the column on the far left here. Um, these are all the components to a cost of attendance um, and what you should be considering when determining how much approximately it would cost um, for one academic year at Cal Maritime. So there is a tuition and the campus fees. Those are required across the board for every student, doesn't matter where they live. Housing for those living on campus is roughly about $13,900. Medical insurance that you can definitely opt out of, but otherwise you're looking at $1,500. Um, those are all charged by the university. The, the, those are direct expenses. The next ones are indirect expenses. So these numbers could vary by student. So books and supplies, the university will not charge you for books and supplies. The university will not charge you for transportation, personal expenses, estimated loans. So this could vary. This, the student may not end up needing $1,000 for books and supplies. It just depends on where they buy the books. Um, so that number may be different, um, maybe more or less. Same thing for transportation or personal expenses. So that 30,000 bottom number that you see on there may be a little bit less potentially by $1,000, $2,000 less, so not a whole lot, but still your total cost may not end up being $30,000. The uniform cost and orientation fee, that will only apply the first year. So after the first year, you will not be paying that $2,400 for a uniform, unless, of course, the student needs a sea bag or a uniform again for any reason, then obviously they will have to buy another one. But this is only a first time freshman um, incoming student that will pay that. Moving forward, you can exclude that charge from the expected cost. Um, so that's knocking it off another $2,400, $2,500. Um, but this is approximately again, how much you should expect, give or take a couple thousand dollars, 30,000 for living on campus, off campus with parent and or off campus at home and uh, off campus on their own. We usually don't look at too much because students are required to live on campus. But if those numbers do apply to your student where eventually they will live off campus, um, you can look at those other figures, the 31,000 and the $26,000 listed on here as well. <clears throat> so for students who, um, should be going onto the student portal to view the to-do list items or view their financial aid or even their charges. Um, they should be going to csum.edu and going to uh, login on the upper right-hand corner there and then clicking on PeopleSoft Student Systems. Um, this is where, again, students will go in to view their to-do list item, their financial aid, academics, a um, bunch of other information, but this is how they get started and look and signed into the student portal. This is an example of a student who does have items outstanding that need to be submitted. So once logged in, going to the student center on the right hand side, this is where the to do list item is. Um, uh, it lists any required uh, action items that the students need to do. It's not always financial aid. There's other areas that use this um, section as well. Other maybe health center for immunization records or um, academics, advising appointments, et cetera. They may be listed on here or right above it under holds. So important that students are checking both of these areas. Um, To-do list item holds or even right below the advisor. If the student wants to see who their advisor is, it'll be listed on there. This area is very important um, for students because it'll also list their schedule and a few clicks from here, they'll be able to see their charges as well. Uh, here's a specific area where under finances, they can view their account activity, uh, which does a detailed, I know we get questions from students saying, I'm being charged $11,000, but I don't know what I'm being charged for. If they go under account activity, it'll do a detailed um, itemized um, list of charges that students are paying, what are they paying for and how much, but also students can view the financial aid on here as well. Um, and as you can see on this example, they'll they'll be able to see how much they owe um, any outstanding charges. For students who um, wanna sign up for a payment plan, they can use um, CashNet or, or to pay rather, um, they can go on to CashNet, they can sign up for an installment payment plan, um, just know that there is a, a minimum balance that they should have of $400 in order to qualify for that installment payment plan. And there is a uh, $50 initial charge to sign up for the payment plan. 
the dates on here, um, it's divided into three different payments. So the first one would have been due on August 4th, uh, which would be the mandatory fees plus a third of the balance plus the $50 uh, administration fee. Uh, the second payment would be due September 15th. Um, and then the third and final payment would be October 15th. If the student has not received enough financial aid, so grants, for example, to cover the entire cost, there are some options that students can um, look into to help them pay the difference. Students and parents. Unsubsidized loan is one of those options. Parent plus loan is the other or a private loan. Um, there is information on our website. If you go to scan that QR code, it'll actually take you to directly to the page here under types of aid and loans. If you scroll um, a little bit past this subsidized staff for loan area that you see on here, you'll run into information about the unsubsidized loan. What is that and how is that different than the subsidized loan? Uh, if the student has already taken out that loan and you still need additional loan funds, the Parent PLUS loan is an option. Some of you may have already learned or seen that the Parent PLUS loan was added to the student's financial aid, but you couldn't accept it. That's because it does require um, an additional step process. So the Parent PLUS loan is based on credit worthiness. So you do have to go out to Department of Ed. Um, it's a federal educational loan for parents. You have to be, uh, they run your credit and determine whether they you are approved or not. Um, so if you do see the Parent PLUS loan on the student's financial aid account, but you cannot accept it, that does not mean that you've been approved. That just means that we are offering that as an option. If you're still needing um, additional financial resources, the Parent PLUS loan is one of them. And if you go to this website, it'll tell you uh, what the interest rate is and how to apply for it. The third option is a private loan. This is a student taking out a loan on their behalf, their own. So this private loan is on their, under their name, their social security number. It is also based on credit worthiness. So they will run the student's credit based on their credit score. Um, the lender will determine interest rates and how much they qualify for. The other option is scholarships. Um, so I will say, um, to be honest, it's probably a little late to start applying for scholarships for the upcoming school year that is starting in a couple of weeks. Students should really be looking at scholarship opportunities a year before. So right around the time they're filling out the FAFSA, um, they should be looking at scholarship opportunities. On our website, we have some resources. Again, if you scan that QR code, on the left-hand side, we have scholarship opportunities and resources. I box them in, the three here. Cal Maritime offers some scholarship opportunities, maritime industry scholarships, and outside scholarships. For the first one, Cal Maritime, um, those are specific to Cal Maritime students. The application for the 24-25 will open mid-November, and the deadline will be late January. We still haven't determined which dates exactly, but we will notify students via email once it's time to apply. And these are not based on financial uh, FAFSA information. It is based on uh, merit and performance, GPA, good standing, um, and we'll also require that students write a letter and submit uh, thank you letters if they are selected for scholarship opportunities. But again, this would be for their second year here or 24-25 academic year, um, and the first scholarships will pay out next fall, not for this fall that's starting. That's very important. So if the student is receiving financial aid, and it is more than enough to cover their balance and there's money left over, the student will get a refund. Um, we will start releasing financial aid on August 21st. Uh, for now, you'll probably see that the student may owe the entire balance, but you're expecting financial aid to kick in and cover all of it or partial of it. Um, that's not going to happen until August 21st. That's when we will release the financial aid. It'll automatically get applied to the charges. And as I was saying, if you do have extra money that was left over once those charges are paid for, a refund will be issued by cashiers. Students have the option of signing up for a direct deposit um, and the money will go straight into their bank account. Or if they do not sign up, then a physical check will be mailed out to them to the mailing address that is on record already. Um, if they want to change it, probably now is the time to change it on the student portal so that the check is sent to the right information. If it ever does change, if you move addresses, make sure that you update that as well, because we look at uh, the mailing address to send any correspondence, physical correspondence. I think to uh, be on the safer side, if you're able to instruct um, your student to do a direct deposit straight into their bank account, it takes two to three days, it's a lot faster, a lot more convenient than a physical check, but both are an option. 
Um, if there's money left over from the parent plus loan and you want that money to be sent to you, the parent, you would have had to have set, um, set that up during the application process. Uh, if you didn't do that during the application process, the refund will go to the student. The policy here that I want to talk about is satisfactory academic progress. So students who fill out the FAFSA, um, in order to continue receiving financial aid, they have to meet this satisfactory academic progress, meaning they have to be progressing towards graduation, meaning they have to pass their classes. Um, so financial aid will monitor that progress at the end of every spring semester so that we do that once a year. And we look for three things. So we look at their GPA. Students should be maintaining a minimum 2.0 cumulative GPA, so not per year. We look at their entire academic history and performance. So this is a cumulative assessment, 2.0 GPA. Students have to be passing 67% of the classes that they uh, attempted. So we look at how many classes did they complete uh, versus attempted. So the attempted is all the classes they try taking, and if they got a, an F, for example, that did, was not completed. Or if they got an incomplete, or if they got a withdrawal, um, or an unauthorized withdrawal, any grade that is not a passing grade is considered attempted, not passed, that'll impact that pace. So if their cumulative performance, all the units they've taken, um, the, the ratio rather of completed versus attempted is not 67% or higher, then the student is not meeting one of this uh, or is not meeting that specific um, SAP requirement, which is the PACE. The third thing that we look at is we want to make sure that students, usually this is not a, a, an issue for our students at Cal Maritime because they are, um, every year they're moved along in, a, in a, the certain classes that they need to take in order to graduate in a timely manner. But there are some students who maybe either do a double major or pick up a minor or um, uh, transfer in and have too many units. We look at the total number of units that they have, and there is a cap that they can receive. So this is called the maximum time frame. Once they're at Cal Maritime, just taking units and not graduating, we will also reach out to the students and say, hey, you're not meeting this. You've exceeded the number of units. Um, and we give them up to 150% above the requirement to reach their degree. So if their degree says that 120, you should be done, we will actually cap it at 180. So 150 above the one percent above uh, 120. Every major has different requirements. So we just use 150% above the unit requirement. If at any time the student is not meeting one of these, they will get an email from us at the end of the spring semester once the registrar's office completes um, the or the professor submit the grades and registrar's office completes all their uh, their grading and semester end process. We will reach out to those students and say, hey, you did not meet the GPA requirement or you did not pass 67 percent of the classes or and or could be more than one. You've attempted 100 over 180 units and you have not graduated. So we will give them an opportunity to appeal. Let us know what happened. What are they going to do to make sure it doesn't happen again? and review whether they can get financial aid for one more year. If they continue to not meet SAP, then they will, um, or they maybe they don't want to appeal. They just want to continue to go to school, then they would just pay out of pocket. But if at any point they're not meeting one of these and they do not appeal, or they've appealed one too many times and still nothing is changing, they will no longer be eligible for financial aid. But we will contact the student, we will let them know. Um, getting to the end, two more slides here, but four important things to remember. The student uh, must apply for need-based aid every FAFSA year by March 2nd. Um, if the student does not apply for financial aid, or if student does not submit an application, they do not get any financial aid. Even if the student is only interested in loans, loans are part of financial aid. So if some students say, I just want to take out a loan, but I don't want to apply for a FAFSA, how do I do that? You have to apply for the FAFSA. Um, and, and making sure that they do it every year. Filling it out now does not guarantee financial aid for the next four or five years. It has to be every academic year. Um, student must check their PeopleSoft student account. I showed you earlier how to check it. Make sure that they're checking it on a regular basis for any to-do list items that are added on there. Making sure that the student is checking their email account on a regular basis. This is our primary way of communicating to students not their Gmail, not their Yahoo account, not their personal account, making sure that they're checking their CSUM email account for any information from our area. Um, if the student needs to withdraw or drop classes and they're on financial aid, making sure that they're talking to one, their academic advisor first before they withdraw or change their, their course, 
uh, of enrollment, and two, with financial aid, because they could potentially end up owing money back if we paid out financial aid, and now they're dropping units or completely withdrawn from the university. So it's important that students are, um, before they make an um, adjustment to their schedule, that they are talking to academic advisor or financial aid for any potential impacts. And then lastly, some important dates to remember. We talked about August 21st. That's when financial aid for fall will be released. Remember, the student will continue to have a balance on there. and Financial aid will not be applied until the 21st. Um, and then after that, if there's money left over, they would get refunded. Late November is when the Cal Maritime Scholarships will open, or the application rather, that students can start applying. We will notify them via email. Late December is when students should start uh, applying for FAFSA for the 24-25 academic year um, as well. And then looking forward into spring, January 2nd is when we will release spring financial aid. So similar thing is going to happen every year where you are going to receive a bill saying, hey, your bill is due on this date unless you have financial aid. So you'll do the manual calculation and say, well, I owe 13000 but financial aid, I'm only getting 10000 That means... I have to pay $3,000 by the fee payment deadline and financial aid will pay the other 10,000 on January 2nd. Um, this is gonna happen every year. Um, I know you're gonna panic. I know you're gonna contact financial aid and that's okay. We're here to help you out and, and remind you, but very important that you get the bill that says you owe this much, but you only owe that much if financial aid is not enough. If your financial aid is enough to cover everything, you're good to go. Just wait until our release date for each one of the terms um, and you don't have to do anything. You should all be good to go and ready to start for fall semester. I think that's all I have. So I will stop sharing and answer any questions. I see some questions on here. I'm not sure if they are any for me, but we can start tackling them. Wow. That was a lot of information. And I loved your um, PowerPoint. Uh, and you have a comment of gratitude from one of our um family members they love the closed captioning at the bottom um so if you planned that it was wonderful thank you um so we do have questions um how we usually do that is i will read them out and whoever feels they're best equipped to answer it can just go ahead and answer it uh, but before i get started on that i uh, would like to know uh, saul if this presentation is available um anywhere else or is it just on your um on, on your computer and I, I would I would love to have access to it I know parents might want it um this is being recorded so yes anyone who missed it or wants to go back and look at some slides they can do that uh within the recording but um do share if it's available absolutely yeah we can definitely um, Benita, I can share it with you and we can blast it out. One of the things, uh, one of my goals um, for our department is to have a library of uh, uh, resources like the PowerPoint, like the recording. So we will, I will do my best to get this up and posted within the next two weeks or so, um, so that you have access to it. Um, okay. Otherwise, we will find a way to also um, blast it out to those in attendance. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started with questions. I think this was, this has been um, answered. Are there emails that go out to parents for payments? Uh, do we access, uh, do we send out anything uh, regarding billing to parents at all? Yes, if uh, the parent's email is included in CashNet, um, okay. the parent will also be notified of the billing statement. Uh, thank you, Judy. Uh, so parents, uh, in one of the slides that we saw, uh, there was a spot where your student can add your email in there and that'll um, help get this information out to you. So work with your student to find that in PeopleSoft and go ahead and add your email to that. Um, we did send out to the parents' emails or family emails that we did have. Did we send something out end of July, Judy? Yes, uh, Robbie mentioned earlier, there were two billing statements that were sent out, um, the beginning mid-July and then another one towards the end of July. All right, thank mm -hmm. you. Um, thank you, Robbie. Um, our total, I have a, a parent asking our total, uh, right now is $9,663. Is that the full amount? 
Uh, so I do see it's from Heather. Um, Heather, if you can email directly to student accounts at csum.edu and we can work with you offline. Okay, thank you. Um, so FERPA authorization forms, um, if we have um, a URL, can someone put that in uh, chat? Because I could not find it with just a quick Google search on our webpage. And I know uh, that we that's intentional, but if, if someone can share it, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. The authorization to release information it has to be done through PeopleSoft student okay. system. So I can put the link of the help guide on the chat here. All right. Thank you, Judy. You're welcome. Um, is this is the service fee when paying by credit card charge each time we pay or is it a one time fee? It's every time. Yep. We haven't received any emails uh, for Joshua Thomas. Thank you. Um, I haven't any emails related to general orientation either. Could you please add me to your um, email list? So Heather, I have made a notation and I will um, follow up on that. Uh, at the summer send off this weekend, we met another student in the same major and he had a class schedule, but we don't have one yet. Is that normal? Um, it's not. So Heather, why don't I reach out to you after this email and see how we can help get you squared away? Um, Will students receive a similar financial aid and billing presentation during orientation? That is a great question. So I don't know the, the program, but I, we can certainly work with orientation. Vanita, I know you have more experience, so I don't know if we will be part of it. Eventually we will. We do want to talk to the students. Um, yes, during orientation week, there will be no formal presentation by financial aid, but students will have about an hour and a half every afternoon uh, free uh, to go ahead and check in with um, offices like uh, financial aid to ask questions, get something sorted out. So um, if you wish to have your student stop by and see Saul, uh, please do so. And um, during the first year seminar, I believe that there might be something one-on-one uh, -on -one with financial aid, not one-on-one, -on -one, I'm sorry, a, a group presentation uh, by financial aid maybe, but it's a great question, Helen. We'll look into it. Um, I found the amount due. How do I get the medical insurance removed as we already have insurance for him? Um, that's a question from Cynthia. I could answer or would one of you like to take it? You can actually, the, the form and what I've been telling students who are reaching out to our area is it's under the Student Health Center, and I posted the link. It's right uh, on the top of that page where students can, um, it'll take them to another page, redirect them to another page, and students upload information to make sure that it satisfies the university requirement for medical insurance. Um, the Student Health Center will then review it, and if approved, the student will get an email saying that it got approved. Student Health Center will then communicate to cashiers that it was approved, and cashiers will remove that charge. It's not live, it's not gonna happen. I know students will say, I got an email and I submitted the form and they're saying I, I have it, but um, the charge is still on there. Okay, when did you get the email? An hour ago, but the charge is still on there. Just give us some time. It's gonna take a couple of minutes. Um, some of these systems just do not talk to each other right away. Um, usually you'll probably find out and learn that if you give it a couple of days, probably two to three, maybe five days, it will go away. However, I will encourage you that if you waited, let's say a week and that charge is still on there, by all means, please reach out to us and say, hey, it's been about a week. It's possible that we may say, you know what, just give us another two days or so, or give us a little bit longer, but at least you're confirming and wanting to make sure that nothing else needs to be done. Thank you, Sewell. I do wanna add also, if uh, you had already submitted the medical insurance waiver and it's approved and it is not applied to the cadets account yet, you can deduct the medical insurance premium part A, 613 from the balance and just pay the remaining. Uh, and then eventually it will reflect on his account th that the waiver has been applied. Um, but we just have a lot of emails, a lot of calls, and we will try to catch up um, for the beginning of the semester. Thank you both. Um... 
when will last week's August 3rd Zoom meeting be posted? Um, I have forwarded that to our uh, public relations office and they usually take a couple of days. Um, and as we get closer to orientation, we all have a, a lot going on. So please uh, be patient with us and we appreciate that. And it'll be posted soon. I'll send out tonight's as well. Maybe look for it tomorrow um, for last week's. Um, authorization to release uh, information help guide has been posted by Judy. Please um, note down that URL, copy and paste it on your device uh, and find that information, um, how to get yourself added for uh, billing emails and other emails that are directed from PeopleSoft. Uh, like Saul pointed out, there are several systems at play simultaneously and not all of them uh, talk to each other. So um, we appreciate any patience and, and uh, grace that you can give us as we work through uh, those various systems. Um, I think that's the end of our questions from, from, from families. Um, Anita, mm -hmm. there was another one. Not sure if it was answered about the billing for the summer. I know I have some information about oh, summer, summer financial aid. But... Yeah, sorry. Do you want to answer that? Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so there's two components to that, obviously, because we work very closely with cashiers. So there is the the billing, which is your question: How does summer billing um, be applied? And also financial aid, which is also very important. Uh, because there is financial aid available during the summer. So the table that I shared of the $30,000 cost of attendance, that's only for fall and spring. So it does not include summer. Summer is a, a required term at Cal Maritime, and there are other charges. The fee um, um, payment structure is already posted on the cashier's website. So there's going to be additional charges for the, uh, for the summer, obviously, but there's also financial aid available to students who one are eligible, submitted a FAFSA application. Um, and two summer is tends to be, um, financial aid available for the summer is any leftover funds from the regular academic year. So we have to keep in mind that summer is part of the twin or uh, the academic year. It's the ending term for the academic year. So it's not treated separately. Um, I'll give you an example. So if a student is eligible for just loans and their loan maximum limit for one year is $5,000 and they take out $2,500 for fall, $2,500 for spring, for summer, they would not have any loan eligibility left. So you would have to then look at the other options that I mentioned, the Parent PLUS loan or the private loan, um, because they've exhausted their limit for the year um, with the student loans through FAFSA. They may be eligible for, let's say, a summer grant. We do have institutional funding that we have available. It is limited, so we have to look at who is eligible. Um, and usually the amount could vary from a couple hundred to thousand of dollars, two thousand dollars. So it's still not going to cover the entire. Uh, fee payment, but it will help some. Students do not have to fill out anything else, do not have to contact our office to say, hey, can I get that grant? How do I apply for that grant? It is automatically reviewed um, and it is view viewed as a whole. So their entire financial aid, how much they've already received for fall and spring, have they maxed any eligibility for fall and spring, and can we give them anything else for summer to assist them with that billing um, for, the, for the specific term? Um, I think that's covered summer. That it's it's not as uh, much as the regular academic year because their housing is not as much either. So it is a lesser amount, and I don't remember the exact amounts. Perhaps um, Robbie or Judy can can show actual costs for for the summer. But to summarize, financial aid is available for the summer um, if students are going to be doing that, but they do not have to apply separately. It's all part of their um, academic year's uh, FAFSA application. Uh, yes, thank you. So uh, we also have the schedule of fees for the academic year. Um, so if you go on the calendar time website and um, search on the search bar, students and parents, the schedule of fees can be posted there and you can see the estimated amount for uh, the summer cruise or the summer semester. Um, so it will be on students and parents. And then under student fees, tuition and charges, 
is the schedule of fees for the 2023 to 2024 year. And then you can see if you open it up, um, you can see that it's broken up into three semesters. And for the summer, um, the total is 2,130. And then if you keep going down, um, the TSGB cruise is 3,605. Thank you. Um, since we were talking uh, about um, health earlier, does anyone know if um, how the health report is submitted to um, to the health center? If not, then I can get that information later. No, I don't, unfortunately. Yeah. So. Uh, whoever is uh, presenting as 602139, if you could kindly send me an email at orientation at csum.edu with your question, I'll uh, be sure to follow up with the health center and get back with you. Um, going back to cruises, I have a question about Cal vet fee waiver that uh, may be applicable to summer cruise. Could you, could someone talk about that? Uh, uh, sorry, don't. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, no, go for it. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so Shari uh, will have more information on this. She handles the CalVet fee waivers or anything with the VA. Um, <laughs> she will have more info. Um, from what I know, it covers uh, fall and spring. So I can double check with Shari if it also covers the summer. Um, and I posted so the link. No, go ahead. I was going to say, I posted the link to the veterans uh, resources. Or the page. If you scroll to the bottom, Shari is our certifying official, um, and it has her contact information on there to reach out to her. I can also probably copy it for you, save you a click, um, and post it in the chat. Um, and of course, uh, as I always remind families that you can send your questions to orientation at csum.edu, and I'm happy to field those uh, emails to the appropriate um, department. So, uh, don't don't be shy about doing that. As we are um, getting pretty close to our hour, I usually ask families um, if anyone was unable to type in their question in chat. If you want to unmute and ask your question, please feel free to do that. We'll allow a couple minutes for that and go back to any final questions that might get typed up in that meantime. All right, um, Cynthia is asking, who do I contact if my two charges do both contain um, tuition, one for out of state and the other bill for WUI? Uh, tuition. Is that Saul or Judy or Frank or Robbie? Yeah, it'll be our cashier's office. You know, they can reach out to cashier's office and we'll gladly help them with their account. All right, Cynthia, you could reach out to Judy. Um, and uh, Judy, are you reachable at cashier at csum.edu? Yes, and another email um, is studentaccounts at csum.edu. I will reply to her chat here. Perfect. So we've talked about um, outreach to families, and I am requesting, uh, if you haven't done so already, could you please um, fill out this form that allows us to contact you with information and also helps us capture if any of our students are uh, legacy students. So please take a minute uh, or two to complete this form when you have a moment. Uh, and those parents who are familiar with um, Facebook, we have a closed group um, where families could join. And there are a couple of questions that you have to answer to get accepted into the group. So please be sure to um, answer those questions. It's your student's name and their major uh, to um, so that I can complete the process. 
Brady on iPhone. Um, yes, you could. Do you want to unmute and ask your question? Sure. Um, for summer, there's actually a fee if they take the cruise. Uh, is that is that the way it works? So if they go on a cruise during the school year, the fees included in their tuition. But if they take something over the summertime, that we have to pay for that. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So the cruise um, is over summer, and that's a, that's considered a summer session. And uh, there's separate fees, like Saul uh, pointed out. Uh, it's billed separately. It's funded separately. It is uh, everything is separate. And cruises uh, begin at the end of you finish uh, spring semester, and then cruise comes in as a as a summer session. Thank you. All right, we are at um, 6.31. I wanna thank everyone for being here today, uh, especially uh, our um, colleagues, my colleagues here for taking the time um, this evening to be with all the families. I do uh, would like Saul to stay for a few minutes. I, I know I have at least one or two parents who have specific questions and see if we can uh, address those. Um, for the rest of you, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. And all the families, um, thank you for joining us until Thursday. Uh, we'll see you again, same time, same link. Um, and we're getting to orientation very soon. It's just a couple of weeks away and we're all stressed at on campus, um, but we'll see you soon. Have a nice evening and Saul, if you will, please stay. Absolutely, yeah, be happy to. Amy, are you there? I think I lost her. Oh, sorry. You wanna stop recording? Yes. Was Amy one of the parents? <laughs>